So I have an idea for a long-term project, but I'm going to need your help. This is not a project specifically about Bionicle, but it does involve Bionicle. Rather, this is about digital electronics. This right here is an integrated chip that I bought for a project a couple of years ago. Obviously, I have not used it yet because there are other parts involved, and this is specifically designed for recharging this. But what was that project? It involved Bionicle in this way. I like to see how a lot of people will have on display Bionicle sets, and often many people will hang black lights or some kind of lighting to actually light up their sets or make them glow. And I wanted to do something a bit different than that. For me, personally, what I wanted to do specifically involved the Rockshi. Now, here's the idea. The Rockshi, when they were designed, came with this socket piece, which comes in a transparent fluorescent orange, and that's always cool. But thankfully, LEGO has made more sockets in more colors and even better, a bootleg company out there has even went on to make them in transparent clear. And that one's important to me for a couple of reasons, and we'll get to that here in a minute. But the nice thing about transparent clear specifically is that it is uninfluenced by a base color, while a color like this will fluoresce orange under a black light. So what is this project? What is this circuit? <laughs> what I want to design is something that's small, small enough to hide under here to be inconspicuous when viewed from above or from face on. Sure, when you look underneath it, you're going to be able to see something. But at the very least, from the top, it should remain or at least look as though nothing is there. Then the idea from that point is to have an LED that shines upward into those eyes. And my original thought was this was going to be one color of LED. And you could basically choose it if I was to make this an actual product, right? However, I've since kind of looked into changing that idea. Instead of making it a one color LED, why not do a full seven color that you can control yourself? But this is a one button input. Essentially, in terms of parts, there's just a handful. Obviously, there's the circuit and the resistors and chips and things that need to actually exist to make this work. But in basic terms, it needed to be able to be recharged fairly easily to light up, of course, to be able to be turned on and turned off, all from the device that clips underneath here. I went one step further than that though, in deciding to do something with a seven color LED, and I made a bit of a discovery, just something that I wasn't aware of, mostly because I had no reason to think about it at the time. But while pulling apart a completely different electronic to replace a battery in another item that I had that needed a battery, which didn't end up working anyway, because it's not the right size, but hey, it was fun. Something that I learned was that we also get buttons that are touch sensitive. And that's kind of cool. I mean, I knew these existed, but I didn't think about it for this project specifically. And why this is important for a project like this is basically touch sensitivity on a tactile button basically gives me two or even possibly three different functions out of one input, right? Now, there are other ways to do that with different types of touch sensitivity, sure, but I wanted to make something that's fairly basic, fairly intuitive. So my idea was basically this. An LED whose brightness can be controlled, that can be switched on and off, and the color can be changed. How would you do this with a button that is touch sensitive? At the moment, my thought was this. You tap the button, just the touch sensitivity. You don't push it, you just tap it. And that would adjust the brightness. You touch and hold the button, and that would cycle through the colors. And then you press the button, physically press the button, move it. And that would turn the switch on and off. That's the idea. anyway. Now, is that actually something that can work? I don't know. Here's the thing. It has been a long time since I have actually really deeply went into digital electronics. And I plan on probably going on a forum online and asking about this kind of stuff to see what is going on. But the basics here are actually fairly simple. In fact, a lot of LED strips do a very similar thing to this, although usually they are controlled outside, right, with a remote typically. So all I'm kind of doing is taking that control and putting it all into one circuit. LEDs are typically pretty small. Uh, they obviously can be. They don't have to be, of course. But if I want something that fits below this, that's pretty important. And thankfully, LEDs, though they do draw a bit of power for a battery at the very least, will still last a very long time and be, of course, efficient. And so all I need to be able to fit underneath this is a battery, a charging port of some kind, and then, of course, the LEDs themselves and integrated chips, etc. The LEDs, integrated chips, so on and so forth, for the most part, will all fit within the same plane on some kind of circuit board. 
But of course, you know, a battery can be thicker, can be different sizes. And the charging port really just depends on what you're going for, right? If you go for something like micro, uh, uh, like USB-C, then you have some added benefits there. If you go for something like a micro, uh, 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 I'm losing the thought on what they're all called. There's just too many of them, but you get my point, right? So you do have options for sure. Like I said, it's just an idea of a project. It's, it's absolutely in its earliest stages. And the schematic I drew up even for the original version obviously isn't going to work for this since this version is obviously more complex than what I had originally intended. However, there's no reason to say that I wouldn't make both versions. If this is something that I can make that I can mass produce, then I would like to sell something like this to collectors, obviously. I don't know a cost for something like this just because... There are obviously things I haven't thought about yet, um, so that's all in the future. And I think in terms of making a product like this viable, it's probably best to do it in bulk for probably some pretty self-explanatory reasons. But if it isn't obvious, I am naive about this stuff. I don't know everything that goes into a project like this. So I am going to go out of my way to peruse... <laughs> Reddit if I have to, <laughs> you know, or other forums where I can ask questions, hopefully get answers as well, and do my own research. For a long time, digital electronics, especially when I was growing up as a kid, were a mystery to me. I had no idea how they worked because I couldn't see any mechanical moving parts. And though I was always pretty good at mechanisms, understanding what was doing what when I could visually see it, I didn't know about digital electronics. It's all kind of hidden from you. Even when you see the circuit board, at the end of the day, it's just electricity moving around. That's not something you could really visualize, at least not without an understanding of what digital electronics is actually doing. So in high school, I took a digital electronics class and I loved it. It was probably my favorite class of all of high school. And it really helped too that at the time they had introduced a really high demand class. So everybody took that one, meaning there was only like eight or 10 people in my class for this school, which was fantastic. It meant a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with arguably the best teacher in that school. Because of that, I learned a lot about digital electronics. And I'm thankful in the sense that not only I got that opportunity, but for myself at least, I'm a fairly fast learner, at least at that point in time in my life I was. And so it was pretty easy for me to actually grasp the concepts of what was going on. So being able to spend an entire year learning about this kind of stuff, even if it was the basics to it, was honestly invaluable to me because I went into this class not knowing anything about digital electronics at all. I knew like what a switch was and how that kind of worked, sure. Breaking and connecting an electronic circuit, sure, that's easy. But integrated chips, everything was lost on me there. Once I started to learn by like logic and logic gates and things like that, like as soon as I learned about logic gates, everything clicked for me because I'm like, oh, this is actually pretty easy. <laughs> That's not to say that it's all easy. There are a lot of people that make entire careers out of, well, designing and fixing and all that stuff, modifying, etc. digital electronics. And it's a lot of fun. It's something I love. If I had a career path in life, that would probably be one of the ways that I would go. If not botany, then that. You know, I love plants. I love digital electronics. Maybe tying the two together. I don't know how you do that, but it'd be a lot of fun. And so a project like this is honestly... Again, in a way, kind of dusting off my skills because it has been a long time since I've used them. Yes, I fix people's electronics on occasion, but that's just me plugging in parts that were designed for something already, for the most part. Sometimes I'd modify things, but that's rare. However, outside of that, there's just a fascinating culture around digital electronics, you know? And, and in a way, there's kind of um, a freedom to it, which is probably a topic of its own video, to be honest, but there are a lot of people that have a passion for it like I do that I wouldn't have if I had not taken a class like this. And it was crazy because at the time, the class that was offered, that new class was aerospace engineering, which I also loved that. Like who as a kid didn't want to be like an astronomer, you know, or an astronaut or whatever. Um, and the reason I didn't take it was because I was like, I know at least a little bit about how an airplane flies, about thrust, about this and that. And I knew nothing about digital electronics. So it was really about getting out of my comfort zone. And I'm so thankful I made that choice. Both would have been with the same teacher. So I wasn't losing out. Like I said, fantastic teacher. But all that being said, 
for actually putting these skills to use. I've done it on occasion, but never to this degree. And it reminds me a little bit of a project I did for that class. Uh, one major project. Essentially, we were tasked with what was supposed to be a three-month project. Either, either three weeks or three months. My memory is failing me. Either way, that's not the purpose of the video or the story. But the idea was that we were supposed to make a circuit that could display our birthday by flipping a set of three switches. Again, this was supposed to take a while. However, at this point in time, I had also joined the robotics team, and although I didn't contribute much to the team specifically, other than a handful of designs for things, and, you know, uh, creating the symbol for the, the thing, which ended up not actually really being used anyway for different reasons, but <laughs> outside of that, what I did do was I spent a lot of this time in this robotics class the first day that this project was revealed working on this project and I finished it before the that that day's electro uh, uh, robotics meeting adjourned so I basically in about three hours did what was supposed to take several months because the idea was not that it was a project that takes that long obviously it didn't but we were supposed to learn along the way and I think one of my strengths, and this applies to Bionicle as well, which is why I'm bringing it up in this video in the first place, is that once I can grasp a concept, I can truck through it for the most part. And I think we all have this capability when we are in our prime, when we're kind of in that flow state, when we are left to our own devices about something we are passionate about. Oftentimes, we don't give ourselves enough credit for this stuff, but it is a truly fascinating aspect of being a person, you know? And so a project that was supposed to take a long time took me a handful of minutes, not because I understood exactly what I was doing, but because I had applied everything that I had learned and I grasped those concepts rather than just going along with the textbook, so to speak, page by page learning as we go. I was deeply interested in what I was learning. And because I had grasped these concepts Initially, because logic gates made logical sense to me, I was able to apply it to this circuit quickly. And uh, it worked. <laughs> um, but thankfully, like I said, one of the reasons that this was my favorite teacher in school is because he kind of knew this about me already. The year prior, I had taken a class about, um, um, what was it called? Intro to Engineering Design, something along those lines. Um, and I did a very similar thing to that as well with a 3D modeling program called Autodesk. This was all the way back in 2010 when I really liked that program and then they switched it up for touch screens and I, I didn't care for it that much anymore. And now I'm, I don't know it. I'm not familiar with it. Um, it is a skill I have unlearned. But I did a very similar thing in that class as well because in that class we were supposed to have a long-term project that was supposed to be finished essentially as our final for the semester. But we were supposed to follow some very specific steps and I didn't. I went out of my way to do it my own way, and I finished the project, I think, in three days. This was supposed to be a handful of weeks of, for this project, three or four weeks, something like that. Um, I, I said as the final. That's not technically true. It was kind of like leading up to the final, but you get the point. And suffice to say, when my teacher recognized this about me, he let me do my own thing because he knew, although you're not doing what I'm asking you to do, you're achieving the end result. And he recognized the value in that. And I think we all have that ability. So that's the lesson I kind of want to leave you with with this video. You might not always do something the right way. But sometimes it's about the approach. Learning an approach that works for you, that's comfortable with you, that again works with your sort of workflow. And that can be hard to find. When you're somebody who's passionate about a concept, uh, a specific way of doing things, one of the most disheartening things to be told is to do it a different way. And I've been through a lot of teachers like that as well, who can recognize your strengths, your voice, but they don't allow you to express it. Not because they don't care, but oftentimes curriculum is involved, right? And many teachers are going to go out of their way to follow curriculum to a T. And I think the best ones, 
I know we're getting on a little bit of a tangent here, but I want to finish this because I do think it's important. Sometimes the best uh, tutors, let's say, are those who recognize your skill set and allow you to express yourself in a way that best suits you. As long as I guess you get to that end result. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I know it dragged on a little bit, but like I said, this is a long-term project. I don't expect it to be done anytime soon. I don't even know if it's technically practical. You know, stuff like this is reasonably cheap. It's not about that, but there's a lot of labor. There's a lot of design stuff like that that's involved with this kind of stuff. And at the end of the day, it's not a straightforward process. That's also to say that just because I design something with or without help from anybody else does not mean that it's the end all be all of a project like this. Because I guarantee no matter what I design, someone can do it better. It's been a long time for me. But with all that said, if you are interested in lending your voice to this project, you can always leave a comment, well, down below, which also helps the algorithm. So, hey, can't hurt. Even if you know nothing about digital electronics, if you just want to follow along with this project, well, let me know. Because, um, yeah, I think it'd be a lot of fun. And of course, along with all of that, you can check out the Discord, Instagram, or Patreon if you want to support the channel and what it is I do here and get some perks. And I will see you all in the next one. I guess make sure you're subscribed if I didn't say that already. Take care.